This week's active Amber Alert is on Kendrick Jackson. Kendrick Jackson disappeared April 7, 2006 from Houston, Texas. He was three years old when he went missing. He was three foot and weighed 30 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. Kendrick was born March 16, 2003 to Kiana Jackson and Roderick Fountain. Kendrick lived with his mother Kiana and his grandmother in Houston, Texas. On April 7, 2006, Kendrick had been visiting with his father Roderick since the end of March. His father lived at the Canfield Falls apartment complex located in the 1200 block of Wilcrest Drive in Houston, Texas. On the morning of April 7, 2006, Kendrick's father, Roderick, originally said he left the apartment around 9 a.m. to go do laundry. When he returned around 9.30, 10 a.m., the front door was open and Kendrick was gone. He said he searched for Kendrick for about an hour and then he called 911 at 11.19 a.m. Despite a massive search by Houston Police Department and civilian volunteers that spanned several days and many miles, Kendrick was never found. Police questioned neighbors to see if anyone saw anything, and we're going to go over those witness statements now. One neighbor says she walked to the nearby store around 10 a.m. and returned around 10.30 a.m. She says she didn't see anything unusual or see Kendrick. She also says she did not see Roderick searching for Kendrick, nor did he come to ask if Kendrick was there, even though their children play together sometimes. She also claims that she left again around noon and saw Roderick and asked how he was, and he responded he was doing fine. He never mentioned anything about Kendrick missing. Another witness was the apartment maintenance man. The maintenance man says he arrived at work at 9 a.m. He noted the security gate to the apartment complex, the only way in and out, was working properly. He also said he was overseeing renovations at one of the units near Roderick's unit and never saw the door open, nor did he see Roderick looking for Kendrick. He also noted how nonchalant Roderick was speaking to police. Roderick was brought to the police station the afternoon of April 7th for an interview, and we're going to go over that now. Police went over Roderick's cell phone records, which they had by that point, which showed Roderick had originally lied to them about his whereabouts that morning. It shows him going to numerous houses. And I won't go over everything, but if you're watching this on YouTube, there will be links in the description if you want to know more. Now, there are two women that I will talk about, one of them being his daughter's mother and the other one being Kendrick's mother. Roderick's daughter's mother claims that she was borrowing his truck for work, and while she was at work, he would stay at the house with their daughter, and Kendrick would be with him sometimes. Two days prior to Kendrick's disappearance, she claims that Roderick told her that he hit Kendrick because he peed on himself and he fell into the wall, causing a hole, though she did not tell police about this. As a matter of fact, it was told to the district attorney years later, a month prior to Roderick's trial, which we'll get into. She also claims that Roderick came over April 7th around 6 a.m. and Kendrick was not with him. Though Roderick did try to convince her to tell police that Kendrick was with him. The other person I want to talk about is Kendrick's mother, Kiana. Now, I usually don't let my personal feelings come across on these videos and I like to stick to the basics of the day of the disappearance and the facts. But the facts on this case is that Kendrick's mother knew Roderick was abusive towards Kendrick. She not only admitted this to police, but she also testified about it in court. Using a mannequin in court, she testified to busted lips on Kendrick. She pointed out where bruises were on him. She even talked about a time that Roderick held Kendrick underwater while giving him a bath. Busted lips and bruises. Busted lips and bruises on a three-year-old beautiful, beautiful baby. She says she never called police or reported Roderick because she didn't want Kendrick to not have a relationship with his father. What's sad to me reading over the trial transcripts is the majority of these women he visited that morning, they all knew he had been abusive to Kendrick, or they saw bruises, and they never turned him in. They never reported it. Let's go over the arrest, charges, and the trial. Roderick was charged with false statements to police. He was also charged with causing injury to a child due to the testimony of bruises being seen on Kendrick prior to his disappearance. He was charged with possession of a firearm as a felon because of previous charges of drugs, theft, as well as violent offenses. And even though the charges were dropped for this one, I felt it should be noted that he was accused of murdering a teenager in the year of 2000. However, like I said, those charges were later dropped due to lack of evidence. In 2009, Roderick was charged with Kendrick's murder, and in 2011, he was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Roderick maintains his innocence. Kendrick's Amber Alert remains active still to this day because he's never been found. 
Kendrick would now be 20 years old. If anyone has any information about Kendrick's whereabouts, please call the Houston Police Department at 713-731-5223. Like I said earlier, if you're watching over on YouTube, make sure you check out the description box as there are links provided. If not, if you just search Kendrick Jackson or Roderick Fountain, you should be able to find the transcripts to the trial. Please make sure that you're subscribed and or follow us so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Please consider giving this video a like and leaving us a comment. Make sure to check out our pages. We post missing persons daily. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next Monday for another Active Amber Alert.